Coming up in this video, we call into Glen Rowan and have a look at the site where Ned Kelly was captured. We take a very scenic drive that takes us around the waterline of the Hume Dam. We have a look at the Etamoga pub and once again we visit Yalaka before moving on to South Australia and checking out some silo art. All that and more coming up in this video. I'm Mick and this is Sally. Together we've been caravanning Australia since the 1980s and more recently we started to put the videos together just to show you some of what we see out there. There's a lot to see in Australia and we hope you enjoy what we have here to show you. You can follow us on our trips via the following social media platforms. If you like the following video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Good morning everyone and welcome to the start of another video and we're going to take this one up. We're currently at Geelong and uh, we're at the showgrounds and uh, I've got a doctor's appointment tomorrow and if all goes well there, just a bit of a growth on my back, get them to have a look at it before we continue on our way. But uh, this is the first video after our uh, three months in Tasmania, so if you haven't seen any of those videos, jump onto the channel and have a look, quite a few videos there to have a look at, we had a great time over there but from here we're going to head up towards Albury Wodonga and uh, catch up with some friends up there, Sally hasn't met them and uh, spend a couple of nights there and uh, we'll be heading off today's uh, Sunday and uh, all being well tomorrow at the doctor, we'll be heading up there on Tuesday. The showgrounds certainly look a lot greener than what it was when we were here three months ago and uh, very nice to see. My appointment at the skin specialist went well and that meant that we could continue on with our trip rather than head directly back to Adelaide where I had an appointment there. So it was bright and early the next morning we left Geelong and started to make our way north up towards the Aubrey Wodonga area. As we drove through Glen Rowan it was an ideal opportunity to stop and have a look at the area where the famous outlaw Ned Kelly was captured. Yeah, good day everyone, and we're at a place called Tangambalanga, if I've got that right, and uh, it's the biggest drive we had today since we've uh, been over at Tasmania, a bit over 400 k's, but uh, we're here with a couple of YouTube followers that uh, follow us, and uh, Jeff and Jenny, and they've invited us, or we've uh, got the okay from them to come up and see him for a couple of days so we're here for two nights. While in the area it gave us the opportunity to do the scenic drive around the Hume Dam and the first place that we were going to go to was a town called Tallangatta or Tallangatta I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it but we went there and from the side of the town we went up to this lookout here which gave us a beautiful view over the town. During the 1950s, the dam was extended and that meant that this town was going to flood. So at that point, it was relocated to its present location where it stands today. From the lookout, we continued on to where the original town was located. On the day that we were driving around here, the water capacity of the dam was roughly 60% of total capacity. Now this meant that it was very low and uh, this gave us the opportunity when we are here at the lookout to where the old uh, town was situated, it allowed us, as the drone flew over, to see the footings of some of the old buildings. It's amazing how quickly water levels can change. In January of this year, being 2024, the water level was approximately 84%, and as mentioned earlier on, it's now down to around the 60% mark. Even though the dam was a long way down from capacity, it was still a pretty sight to drive around.
As we made our way around the Hume Dam, the next point of interest was the Pathanga Bridge. The construction of this bridge commenced in 1927 and it was then opened in September 1930. With a clearance of 25 metres below the bridge, one of the longest spans is a length of 82 metres. With a total length of 752 metres, it actually takes you across the border between New South Wales and Victoria. As we continued our run around Lake Hume, we momentarily left the area to head further north into New South Wales and have a look at the Etamogga pub. There are two of these pubs built in Australia. Obviously there's this one, and the second one is in Cunderdon in Western Australia and they reflect back to the old Australasian Post. It's a magazine that used to come out weekly many, many years ago when I was a kid. Once I had escaped from my lock up here, we then had a very enjoyable lunch at the bar and grill, which is alongside the pub, and then continued on our way. From the pub, it was a quick stop in Albury to do a bit of shopping, and then it was on to the Hume Weir. Even though the water level was drastically down, it's a very pretty location this one, but wouldn't it be an awesome sight had the dam been full to capacity. We have previously visited the Hume Dam and viewed the weir here, but uh, it's nice to have local knowledge that we gleaned from Jeff and Jenny whilst we were there for other things that we did look at as we drove around the dam. And uh, we do thank Jeff and Jenny for their hospitality while we were there. It was certainly good to catch up and uh, enjoy a bit of time with them while we were in the area. Time to head back to the caravan and enjoy that final evening with Jeff and Jenny before we left the following morning. With another 400 kilometre day to tow the van today, it was amazing how quickly you settle back into these longer days towing the van versus when we're in Tasmania, travelling roughly 20 to 30 kilometres when we made a move. As we started our day travelling through the hills, the autumn colours were certainly very pretty, but once out on the flat, the trees were gone and uh, the blue skies shone upon us. Uh, good day everyone, and uh, we've just uh, managed to arrive at uh, St Arnold, and we're only here for one night, it's just a fill in, just on our way through, and uh, we'll be heading off pretty early in the morning, or as early as what we can, so it's only one night. It's a big open area this one, it's a free camp and we shared our single night here with one other lot of campers. On our way out of town the next morning we went down and had a look at the silo art here. It's not a colourful one this one but certainly one that has got a lot of detail to it. Now on the road and making our way across to Yalika, the first stop of the day for us today was going to be at Matoa, and it was there that we're going to visit the stick shed. Three months ago, as we made our way to Tassie, we called in here to the stick shed to have a look at it, but due to a catastrophic fire danger day, the public was restricted from entering the building.
The construction of the shed, which, which consisted of 560 unmilled upright poles, made 56 rows of 10 poles wide. And that construction started in 1941, September 1941, and was completed in January of 1942. The building's 270 metres long, 60 metres wide, and 19 metres high. The stick shed is the only remaining emergency grain storage building of its type and is now registered on the Heritage Register list. From Matoa, we continue to make our way across Victoria as we headed for Yalaka. Something that we don't have very much of in South Australia and that's these Victorian single lane bitumen roads. I guess it's better than dirt roads, but uh, still something that takes a bit of getting used to. After a short run on a bit of dirt road, we were soon arriving here at Yalaka, which was going to be home for the next few nights. G'day everyone and uh, we've arrived at Yalaka and uh, that's of course my uh, younger sister Debbie and her hubby Paul, it's their place and uh, we're here for, well, it's probably going to be three nights and uh, see what happens with this weather. Like most places, very very dry and waiting for the next rain and the last time that we were down here, oh the grass was so green and so high that it was falling over on itself but uh, let's hope rain's not far away. As with any livestock, I guess, the cattle soon learn that when the hay comes down in the truck, it's time for a feed. With it being lambing time on the property, it was a quick drive around just to make sure that everything was all good with the sheep and the young lambs. And at the same time, it was an opportunity to pick up a bit of firewood in the trailer. With so much dead wood laying on the ground, it was a great opportunity to get that wood and not have to worry about the amount of wood that you were burning. The young ones grow up so fast you just don't know where the time goes but here they are already enjoying the motorbikes. It was an opportunity for me to go for a bit of a drive with Paul as he went about his daily chores. With the season being so dry, of course, sheep feeding was also on the cards as well as feeding cattle. Making sure that the grain was free to flow within the feeders and also moving some of the feeders to a more suitable location, all part of working on the land. Our last morning at Yalaka was a cool and foggy morning, but that also meant it was time to say goodbye to Debbie and Paul as Sally and I continued to make our way towards home. From Yalaka, we headed north up to Caniva, and it was there that we had a look at some solo art. Very pretty silo art this one, but unfortunately with the sun on the wrong side of the silo whilst we were there, I think it lost a bit of the wow factor. Mm -hmm. 
After leaving Canova, it was across the border back into South Australia before we started heading north and it was into Lamaru where we were going to have a look at more solo art. The solo art that we're looking at now here at Lamaru has only been completed in the few weeks prior to us being there today. This silo art's very pretty and that yellow there that you're looking at around the windmill when the sun was shining on it, it was almost like someone had switched the light on behind it. From Lamaru, we headed to Loxton on the River Murray where we were going to spend the last night of our trip. Yeah, g'day everyone, and uh, we've made it to Loxton, and this is the last night in our big trip uh, going over to Tassie, and uh, camp by the mighty Murray at the moment, and that'll be for tonight, and we're only here for one night, and then we push on and finally get home tomorrow. Camping by the River Murray, or any river, versus camping by the ocean in any location there. I'm not quite sure which is the best one, but certainly when you're by the river, it is very, very hard to beat. Even though we are camped down where we are by the water's edge, it is part of the uh, Loxton Caravan Park here, so it's $25 a night. We are on an what they call an unpad section, but a oh, foggy start to the morning, beautiful way to commence any day. Yeah, good morning everyone, and uh, we leave Loxton this morning and go home, and uh, that'll be the end of this video, and uh, of course that'll also be the end of our Tasmanian trip and a bit over 230k from here to get home and when we've done that it'll be a bit over 8,000 kilometres for our entire trip of course which includes Tassie so we've thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, if you haven't seen any of those videos or want to have a look at a particular spot in Tassie go back on our channel and uh, plenty of videos there to have a look at and until that next video goes up you take care and look after yourself. If you like the video that you just watched, give us a thumbs up and if you want to see more of our videos, click on the subscribe button and once you've done that, change the bell notification to all. That way every time that we do uploads to our YouTube channel, you'll be notified.